You are listening to the WADT Podcast. This episode is part two of a four-part series called Transform. For this series, we are collaborating with the Taihua Kwan Moral Charities, a non-profit organization that provides assistance to the elderly, the sick, families, children, and persons with disabilities through many different programs and services. One of which is the Brotherhood Program, where men who have caused hurt to their loved ones are helped to resolve their issues with anger and aggression. Throughout this series, you'll be hearing very real and personal stories of adversity, courage and victory told by those who lived these experiences. Today we have with us Ismail and Sebastian who have agreed and boldly come forward to share their stories. Welcome to both of you to WADT and thank you for being willing to share your story. Okay, Ismail, let's begin by maybe asking you to share um, what brought you to the Brotherhood program. I was introduced to uh, to the Brotherhood program by my counsellor, Irene. Yeah, so uh, Irene and I uh, met uh, through the court, actually, because uh, me and my sister, we had an issue. Uh, both of us do not have any violent history. Yeah, uh, but uh, unfortunately, we had an altercation that uh, caused both of us to uh, be a little bit handsy. <laughs> yeah, uh, both of us never had any problems before, good relationship, everything. Just because of one stupid argument, somehow scratches and slaps were thrown. My reaction to scratches and slaps was, uh, my own uh, violent uh, reaction. Yes, I was hit okay. and scratched and abused okay. first, but I think that it was a mistake. Uh, everyone's a human and uh, my sister was uh, angry. I was angry. Both of uh, She went to the cops. I didn't. I have a temper, mm -hmm. but uh, no, I don't do physical things. Like I, 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 would, I would shout and scream, yes. Definitely, but uh, not. It's not a common thing. It's not a common. It's not a daily occurrence. It's like once or twice a year, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, and usually it's when people attack me. Uh, I would say uh, when I get angry, I get very angry. Yeah. Oh, just like the Incredible Hulk, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I'm also quite vengeful. I keep mm. it here and I wait my time, but mm. um, I'll get my revenge. <laughs> and, oh dear, uh, all right. I better yeah. not uh, make you angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it's not good. It's not good, actually. It's not good. I mean, everyone gets angry, but you know, uh, for, for some people, it is you know, a, a trigger point, right? It's a very raw nerve that once you touch it, wow, it, it triggers off a chain reaction that it's very hard to stop. It can be stopped, but very hard to stop. Uh, where, where do you think it came from in your case? I think it was how I was brought up. Okay. Would honest, you like to share a little bit about um, that? I'm the eldest child of my uh, family. I've always been uh, the abang for my... I have other siblings. I have about four siblings. All younger, yeah, uh, all younger than me. And I was brought up to be responsible for all of them. If I get into trouble, I get beaten. If uh, my my siblings get into trouble, I get beaten. So um, I, I I refuse to say that I was uh, it was an abusive childhood. Even though almost every day I got caned, because I was naughty. Yeah, my siblings were very naughty. So um, I think we kind of deserve it, lah. But um, I grew up angry because I did not know why I was being killed. Nobody explained it to me. Yeah, I don't understand why somebody else's actions, uh, I was to be punished. Yeah, and I grew up angry because of that. Hi, Sebastian. How are you today? Yeah, hi, I'm good. Yeah, okay. So, maybe a bit of um, your background and what led you to the uh, joining the program, the Brotherhood program? 
Yeah, especially the brotherhood program. My actually, I was uh, introduced by my FSC to the brotherhood program um, because uh, I went through a few counselling with them and um, things were still not uh, resolving. So uh, maybe my counsellor worked out uh, this this plan worked out and if I refer Sebastian to the brotherhood. So that's how I, I came to the brotherhood program. So what led you to being counselled? Uh, maybe a bit of what happened in the past? Um, what happened in the past, why I was being counselled and all that, because uh, this all started when my, uh, my son passed on. Mm -hmm. In 2016, he passed on. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where the anger started. That's where the family issue started with my uh, wife, children, people around me. And also, I first thing, um, I did not uh, forgive myself. Mm -hmm. The blame, the violence. Well, it's time for a very important message. And the message is this. There are many forms of abuse. They may be physical, emotional, or sexual in nature. Parents can also abuse their children by either physically or emotionally neglecting them. If you are one of the one using violence, we urge you to seek help to overcome your aggressive and violent tendencies. If you are being abused or know of someone who is, help is available. Please call the National Anti-Violence Helpline 1-800-777-0000. Family violence is not a private matter. Everyone can play a part to stop it. So you have gone through the Brotherhood program. How long was the program? A few months lah. Yeah, uh, once a week. Once a, yeah, I think once a week. Uh, I'm sorry, my memory is a bit uh, shady because uh, the last session was like uh, maybe six months ago, seven months ago. So I cannot I remember. No problem. Yeah, but Not it's about problem. once a week lah. Okay. I think so, yeah. So you have gone through the program, you have finished it, okay. Um, uh, can you share with us what how did the program help you you know in terms of helping you change in your anger and maybe anger management at first i was like i cannot accept i i i i decided to join but i like still had that thing where i cannot accept because i i know i don't i'm not a violent person nor am i abusive i don't think so but um slowly what i learned is even though your intention is not to be abusive, you may be regarded as abusive. Mm -hmm. um, for me, like sometimes raising your voice to make a point is okay. But to others, uh, that's not right. Because you're speaking to another adult or another human being. And uh, you have to show respect to that person. So, um, I could see where, uh, where that is coming from, uh, where, where other people are coming from. And the other thing that I learned is uh, gratitude. Because um, when I hear other people's stories, their backgrounds, what they are facing, um, I always reflect back, I've got it good. I'm living life on easy mode. If it's a game, I'm on easy mode because I have friends that are supportive. I'm in good health. Um, I have a job. I have a home. I've got food to eat. I've got living family. So what more uh, do you want? Yeah. So when I hear other people's stories, I'm like, wow, other people have bigger problems than me. How do you inculcate or, or develop this attitude of gratitude? Mm, I have, I've, I'm a proud man. Yeah, I'm a very proud man. Uh, I've always felt that uh, everything I achieve, I achieved it by myself. Yeah, uh, that's a myth. That's not true. Uh, I am where I am now because of the support and love of my family and friends. But uh, before, because I was doing very well, I had a good career, I had lots of money and everything. Uh, but that made me very proud. 
mm-hmm. egoistic probably. Yeah, I, I guess it's not wrong to be proud, right? I think there's a place to it for it. Uh, I think the problem comes when you are proud to the point, you know, that you're not open to recognize uh, some of the areas that you're not very good in where it needs, you know, improvement and uh, also not, not uh, appreciating and honoring others in your life who have made sacrifices and have contributed to your success also. All right, Sebastian, uh, you were mentioning about you were angry uh, and you were sad by your uh, child's death just now and then uh, you went to uh, attend the program by uh, Brotherhood uh, of the High Kwan. And uh, maybe you can tell us a bit on uh, what about the program that uh, made you a change uh, and to what you are today. Mm, the program, first thing I, I, I when I attend Brotherhood program, actually when this, when this problem was going on, I was very uh, reserved. I wouldn't want to share anyone. I was worried about the authorities. So when I first came here, I, I one of the person called Mr. Ben, I open up to him and tell him, so when I came here, I saw other brothers and I look at them and I was very quiet. So I was not searching for, you know, a, 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 a revenge or anything, to pursue the law I and mean, nothing. I just want a medicine, you know, you know to my wound to be. So there, when, when I open up my problem, I just slightly open up. So. One of the brother voice out. He really voice out. He said, "How could this be happening?" You know, and the next one, next brother open up. Another brother open up. So, I felt that I, I in, the, in the same boat, the brother. I have to have, to have people who, who have the same pain which I went through, and slowly they, they they guided me, what to do, not what to do, and 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 but in a very nice manner, not enforcing forcing me, uh, putting down rules and regulations. So Sebastian so like this, like that. No, no. Very nice, and, and they tell me how men should be, the, the wife, how you should tackle your problems, and what are the tools you need to use. So I took the tools and use. Yeah, today I am better, better my family, much more better my family, my kids. What What are the changes that in your life that has happened? What are the changes in my life have happened? I am happy with my family now. Um, as a man. I always tell my brothers, I always tell them, learn to say sorry. You know, before your action, whatever you do, you should think for the consequences, important. And I learned to respect um, the woman who's with you all the way. The kids, kids are small. Yeah, you may be small, but they're, they're learning, you see, and what are you feeding them? So I think of this and also learn to give back to the society by doing charity and all that. What about friends? I mean, I'm sure that you mentioned about the other brothers wow. uh, who yeah. are around you. So so what difference does it make compared to the friends we have then and now? Dan was, um, my Dan friends was, um, I call it uh, um, beneficial friends. And now the friends I'm having are not beneficial friends, they're real friends. So even even the situation now I'm in now, a, a friend was g- given me the opportunity. He gave me the opportunity to do my own things, my own own business and all that. So from there is my stepping stone. So slowly I met one two friends. Um, also have this same problem, but they are not. Um, uh, they are just 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 recommended to the brotherhood. Uh, what I learned here, and also I talked to them. And they're much better. And they ask me where you where, where have you got all this counseling, all this from me. I tell them about brotherhood. If the men open up and they come to brotherhood, if they, if they open up hundred percent, I tell you hundred one percent they will benefit. They will benefit, and and, and I I will definitely say um, they will, they will feel the changes not only around them and also with the family, friends, relatives, everyone. even the work. We can, this 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 is the kind of attitude that will bring into your workforce everywhere. So brotherhood have that much of tools that you know have changed me entire entire thing in me around me. Yeah. So so what would be your message to um, the men out there? I mean, if there's one message, something that you really feel deep about, uh, talking to another brother out there who probably faced the same situation that you have faced before, what would be your message? Be your most important message to them? Be the message to them is they're not alone. They're never alone. 
and there is people that will give listening ears a shoulder there, there is and, and, and i think brotherhood is, is the place where we should learn and violence doesn't solve anything it only make you worse bad and you cannot go far with violence so i i'll tell a message to the brothers drop the violence you know go in a soft manner and learn to say sorry that's important well what would your message be uh, to the men whether they are fathers or not listening to this uh, conversation what would you want to say to them i think uh what i would like to tell the men out there is that maybe this is harsher but life's not fair but that is where the gratitude comes in yeah because if you keep seeing the glass as half empty seeing that every everyone is after you it's always my fault my fault that everyone's blaming you the truth is life's not fair and no one's gonna not everyone once is interested in your story they just are interested in the headlines so um so we as men we gotta take responsibility for our actions we gotta take responsibility of our action on how we react or behave uh, towards uh, towards that very good advice thank you very much so finally thank you again to ismail and sebastian for being courageous to come on this podcast to share your story uh, it's not easy i know uh, but thank you for doing that i'm sure many who have will listen to this will be touched and also will be motivated, inspired to take some action, uh, especially those who might have very similar experiences as what you have experienced. So thank you and have a nice day.